first thing to think about when you think about a door is the fact that it is obviously it's a threshold between an interior and exterior condition and that traditionally within architecture the way in which it's functioned is to be not the wall if you know what I mean and not the window so it's not a kind of uh, it's not a kind of break in the surface of a building that you look through in order to see the outside nor is it something that you look into to see what's what's an interior but a door is, is an active thing it's, it's a kind of condition which moves in some way and takes a portion of the wall and shifts it. Doors, though, have also, in terms of, I guess, the history of the one which they've developed, have not only a kind of simple functional role to play, but they also have uh, they're, they're, they're an expression of technology. Okay, and their expression of the way in which a process of thinking about techne or crafting the surface of the wall takes place. If you think of something like the doors of a cathedral, okay, they have, there's an incredibly uh, uh, rich kind of numerological relationship between what the door is, the number of doors, how the doors are used in the, in the, um, the Gothic tradition. So if you think of a Gothic cathedral, they'll often have a, a main central door and two doors either side to the, what are called the aisles on the side of the church. Now, the doors on to the right and to the left as you're facing a Gothic cathedral are essentially there for practical purposes. The central door is really, really important. Okay? It's a very different thing and there's a reason why. Now those doors, along with all the decorations that, that surround it, are very much in the Western tradition about uh, a passage from the profane to the sacred. Okay? So you work, so the, the people who were within the, the medieval community who would be going to that, that Gothic cathedral would pass through that door and literally go through a process where they, were, they had gone into a kind of theological machine. Okay? So the architecture generally, once you're in the interior, okay, is meant to be some sort of transformative kind of entity. And the door is the way in which you make that, that transition. The door of the, um, the old Westpac or Bank of New South Wales building on the corner of uh, North Terrace and uh, King William Road is, is an incredible threshold, not only for a whole range of reasons. One, because of the, the sheer scale of it, the proportions of that, that opening is quite monumental. It, um, it, it reminds me personally of the, one of the most beautiful set of doors I know, which is the ones into the Pantheon in Rome, which are all about, again, 
you walk into this kind of space just in front of the door, then the doors open and you go into the amazing space of the, of the painting itself. With, the, with the, the building in Adelaide, it's very much a process of um, re revelation. It reveals as it kind of descends into the ground. The idea being that you have to wait, you're delayed in your kind of uh, experience of that interior because of the kind of the, the massive technology involved in raising and lowering you know, this thing. For a bank, that's incredibly appropriate because it tells a story to the people who are engaged with the building about the security of the bank. The entire building is about security. It looks like it's a, a tomb of some sort. And so when, you, when the moment finally comes and it descends to the ground and you can walk into the banking chamber itself, you're well and truly prepared for the idea that this is a kind of very kind of special uh, and important place. You know, there's, a, there's a strong correlation between um, uh, how much a building makes you wait or makes you kind of encounter or engage with it and how much you're meant to uh, acknowledge the importance of that, that building, which is what I think that, that door and that threshold itself does. kind of the, the mythology of the cell, you know, that the, it, it's, it's either a good cell, which is a cell of contemplation, which, you know, from a monastery or something like that, or it's the bad cell, the cell of punishment and exclusion. The physicality and the technology associated with that door is, is crucial because, of course, it's, you know, it's the, it's the place where um, discipline enters into the space of the, of the prisoner, be it through perhaps, you know, viewing the portal or whether it's through a... Um, a hatch of some sort which you can work through and of course for the moment when the door opens the prisoner is then allowed out for whatever kind of you know, exercise is available to or, or ultimately released. Prison doors are, are incredibly important because they tell that story about the, the, the need for the prisoner to be kept in a particular place. And so the door, the hinges and the locks themselves are all working together as a, a way to make sure that um, um, they can't be breached. Okay, there's no way of actually kind of uh, allowing people to force themselves you know, casually in or out of, of the process.
think about a door, a door is always something which is part of a threshold. It's the space before it and it's the space after it, which is incredibly important. Um, and the, the choreography or the way in which you walk up to that thing when you're coming from the outside in or when you're trying to, to go out is an incredibly important part of the drama of how a building is, is felt. And uh, people respond to that because it's always about that process of transition. I'm going into something when I'm in it, then I'm engaged with it, be it a cathedral, be it a bank, be it a house.